In today's video, we're going to list the 8 best ETFs overall that every good investor should own, or at least know like the 10 commandments. And for each one of them, I'm also going to give you the European alternative if you invest from Europe or the UK. My name is Ray, guys. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to it for more finance and investing. And now let's go straight to the first ETF. The first one on my list is an ETF that covers mid-cap stocks, which in the United States are companies with a market capitalization between 2 billion and 10 billion. And even though everybody snobs mid-cap companies, this one is the 20th biggest ETF in the world per asset sentiment, which considering there are almost 9,000 ETFs in the world, is not a small thing. The ETF is the Vanguard Mid-Cap ETF, ticker VO, and if you wonder why I'm including a mid-cap ETF in this list, not only this ETF has an incredibly cheap expense ratio of 0.04% and managed 8.16% return per year in the last 10 years, but the last 10 years weren't even the best years for mid-cap stocks. In fact, we are used to only thinking about big companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, but if we look back at the whole performance since 1994 to today, mid-cap has been consistently crashing both small cap and large cap, giving an average annual return of 11.7% against 9.67% percent of large cap and 10.78 percent of small cap. Still, for some reason, mid cap appear to be under allocated. If you ask me, I say we are missing out on a wonderful part of the market that is not too small that there is high risk of failure and also not too large that there is not much growth potential anymore. Now, if you invest from Europe, you can invest in a mid cap universe using the S&P 400 US mid cap by SPDR ticket SPY4, which has an expense ratio of 0.3 percent. But my dear European investors, get used to higher fees than your fellow Americans. ETF number two is the seventh biggest ETF per asset under management and is a value ETF, meaning it's composed of companies that are priced lower relative to their earnings and have low but stable growth. Companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, that it's hard to imagine going bankrupt at some point. This value ETF is the biggest value ETF in existence per asset under management and is VTV, the Vanguard value ETF. If you invested $10,000 in it 10 years ago, you now have $24,611. In fact, VTV has a 10 years annualized return of 9% and sweetens the deal with an expense ratio of only 0.04%. And check this out. The fund has done minus 8% in the last three months, which puts such a stable broad-based ETF at an incredibly attractive price point. With this ETF, you get over 341 wonderful value companies in all sectors, like Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett's Company, Exxon, United Health, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and so on. But Rick, value companies are boring. We want growth. Well, the mistake we make, and I'm pretty sure you make it too, is that we evaluate sectors and ETFs based on the results of the last 10 years. But if we call ourselves long-term investors, even 10 years is not necessarily long enough. If you take the returns of growth versus value since 1979, you see that the outperformance oscillates between growth and value in an almost predictable way. Since 2008, growth and information technology have been dominating the market. But as you can see, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be like this. And look, I'm more of a growth investor myself, so don't get me wrong. I just want to give you a full picture for your investment decisions. And if you invest from Europe and want to lean towards value, there is not a direct alternative, but you could go for the MSCI World Value USD from X-Trackers, ticker XDEV. It includes the whole world with an expense ratio of 0.25%. Or the MSCI USA Value USD ETF from SPDR, ticker ZPRU, which focuses on the US. And since I mentioned the biggest value ETF, I can't help but give you also the other side of the medal, which is the Vanguard Growth ETF, ticker VUG. VUG is also an incredible cheap ETF with just 0.04% expense ratio, tracks the performance of the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index, and you're gonna get a beautiful mix of 220 22 stocks with an exclusive focus on growth. You're gonna get all the famous, glorious companies that everybody talks about, like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Tesla, and also a company like Eli Lilly, which sounds like a new Barbie brand. But jokes aside, it's actually one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, founded by Eli Lilly, a veteran of the American Civil War. The annual return in the last 10 years has been an astounding 12.88% per year on average, and 10% since inception in 2004. But in the last three months, we are down 8.42%. So again, not only are you getting growth companies with a lot of potential and a pretty good average return, but you also get an 8% discount compared to the price of three months ago. Please be advised though that price is up 26% year to date. Now for my dear European growth investors, I'm going to give you one alternative later in this video because I'm still going to give you another growth ETF first, which is even better than this. 
so stay tuned. After covering growth and value, let's now cover another beloved field, which is dividends. What I'm going to give you now is one of the most famous dividend ETFs, and if you know my channel, you surely know what I'm going to talk to you about. If you don't, be sure to subscribe to the channel because that's a great way to stay tuned on ETFs and investing, and because, well, because you're going to help me grow in my small channel that I work so hard for. So this ETF is the third biggest dividend ETF for assets under management. It offers a nice, stable 3.7% dividend yield and grew with an astounding 12% per year since inception in 2011. I'm talking about SHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF that for a minimal 0.06% expense ratio gives you access to the 104 best high yield dividend growth blue chips in America. If you invested $10,000 in SHD 10 years ago, you now have around $27,600 and it would yield you now around $1,000 yearly on dividends. Bigger than SCHD as dividend ETF, there's only VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Index ETF, and VIG the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, just in case you want some alternatives. But SHD is probably still the best choice if you want to have a good stable growth, but also a nice dividend payout every year. If you want to know more, just last week I published a video specifically for SHD. Now for European investors, I'm sorry, but Europe doesn't really offer a wonderful choice for dividend ETFs. You've got the S&P US Dividend Aristocrats with 0.35% expense ratio, the MSCI World Quality Dividend USD with 0.38% expense ratio and honestly a bunch of others with extremely high expense ratios but hey if you've got some better ideas just write them down in the comment section below for the community all right after covering mid cap large cap value and growth as well as dividend kings in your portfolio it's time now for the best sector that the stock market can offer information technology and again i'm gonna give you here a vanguard etf not because vanguard is paying me because no vanguard doesn't care about me. But because this ETF is the biggest information technology ETF in the world per assets under management. With a cheap expense ratio of 0.1%, if you invested $10,000 in this ETF 10 years ago, you now have $56,748 in your portfolio, thanks to a monstrous average annual growth of 18.79%. I'm talking about VGT, the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, which gives you access to all the greatest technology companies like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Adobe, Cisco Systems, and so on. So why should we all love this sector? Well, because yes, it's true that the wonderful returns of the last 10 years make us worry that this growth cannot last forever. But it's also true that since 20 years, technology has been so disruptive that it's hard not to think that technology will drive the growth of our civilization in the years to come. The next ETF is not only a great growth ETF, but it's in the top five of the biggest ETFs of the world per assets under management. This ETF gives you access to the top 100 growth companies in the Nasdaq Composite Index. The very best at the forefront of information technology, augmented reality, cloud computing, big data, mobile payments, streaming services, electric vehicles, and everything you can think about if you picture the future. So imagine one ETF that not only captures the best of the information technology sector, but gets you also the best, most disruptive companies of all the other sector. If you haven't guessed, I'm talking about the Invesco QQQ ETF ticker QQQ, which by investing $10,000 10 years ago would have delivered you a staggering $49,703 portfolio, with an average growth of 17.39% per year. QQQ, as well as its index the Nasdaq 100, have generated faster 10 years compound annual growth rates than the S&P 500 and the Russell 1000 when it comes to revenue, earnings, and also dividend growth. The expense ratio is 0.2%, which is higher than the other ETFs I mentioned, but still pretty acceptable. And if you are a European or British investor and you want to invest in QQQ or in general in a growth ETF, you can either invest in EQQQ, the Invesco Nasdaq 100, that has an expense ratio of 0.3%, or even better, the Lixor Nasdaq 100 from Amundi, ticker LYMS, which brings the expense ratio down to 0.22%. The Lixor has been available since 2019 and had even a better performance than the original QQQ in the last four years, growing 136% against 119 of QQQ. All right, my number seven is the fourth largest ETF in the world by assets under management and is an ETF that covers the whole American stock market with over 4,000 companies. I'm talking about VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, which gives you the greatest peace of mind if you trust the US economy because it gives you access to everything, small, mid, large cap, value and growth, all sectors, 
all companies in the US stock market. MTI follows the CRSP US Total Market Index, which earned an average return of 10.46% annually in the last 10 years. I'm not gonna go into technical details of VTI. Obviously, the expense ratio is as low as it can get with 0.03%, but what I wanna tell you is that for most investors, and probably I would say almost all private investors like us, in the long term, investing in something as broad as the total stock market is gonna give you the best long-term returns because you prevent yourself from making any mistake. Now, if you invest from Europe, you could decide to invest in the whole world using a world ETF, or if you wanna focus on the American stock market, unfortunately, there isn't a valid choice for the whole US stock market. And there is something similar that you're gonna hear with our last ETF, the number eight. And the last ETF is the biggest ETF in the world per assets under management. I'm talking about SPY, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust, that contains the largest 500 publicly traded companies in the US equity market, weighted by market cap and other factors. That means that you get the top of the top. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Meta, and all other giants. So why is this ETF my favorite, and apparently everyone's favorite? Because it offers the best and most optimized diversification of the entire stock market by picking the best companies from each sector. Stocks are selected by the investment company Standard & Poor's, based on profitability, market capitalization, sector allocation, liquidity, and many other important factors, so there is an important vetting process of due diligence behind this choice. And it's basically the biggest gift that we could ever receive as an investor because, let's face it, we could never be as good as them. In the last 10 years, it gave 11% average annual return, while the return in the last 30 years, since 1993, has been still a wonderful 9.62% per year. To give you an idea of what it means for your investment, you can download for free my compound interest calculator from the link in the description below, and if you insert 9.62%, 62% in the rate of return and how much you can invest every month, you get your answer. For example, if you can invest $1,500 per month, you're gonna become a millionaire in 20 years. If you can invest instead $1,000 per month, it's gonna take 23 years. Either way, you can see that becoming a millionaire if you're patient is not as hard as it looks. Now, if you wanna buy this ETF from Europe, you're gonna find the S&P 500 from Vanguard, ticker VUAA, with 0.07% expense ratio, or from Invesco with 0.05% expense ratio. The SPDR is also available with ticker SPY5, but only with distributing dividends, meaning they're not going to be automatically reinvested. These were the best ETFs that you can possibly find and should absolutely know as an investor. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and drop a video for like. I wish you a great day guys or evening and as always I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!